Hey there, dream seekers. Today we're diving into the cool stuff that happens when you hit the hay. Have you ever had dreams about aliens or felt like your dreams predict the future? We're breaking it down. Plus, we'll explore some of the weird things that can happen to you when you're catching some Z's. Get ready for an exciting ride into the world of dreams where anything is possible as we unravel these mysteries together. Dreams are basically your subconscious mind playing out through metaphor what's going on in your day. Usually it encompasses the 24 hours that whatever happened during those 24 hours, it'll get played out through metaphor in your dream. In college, I took the psychology of sleep and dreams from Dr. Rainville, who's no longer with us right now, but he was an amazing man. He was blind and he had a, an assistant there uh, that helped him teach class. And he was what they call advantageously blind, which means that he had eyesight up until a certain point in his life, and then he lost his eyesight. He had a hockey accident. One of the fascinating things that he taught us was that he would attend these conventions for the blind, and even in the blind conventions, they would segregate themselves between the blind from birth in one side of the room with the advantageously blind in the other side because they know what an orange looks like or what the color orange looks like. One of the things too that I found really interesting too, he said that initially when he went blind, he would still have dreams that he could see. It was more tactile around his visual senses that he still had his sight, but as the years went on, he relied more in his dreams on his other senses which portrayed what was going on in his normal life. So when you dream, as I mentioned, it's all being played out in metaphor. And an example of this would be, and this is one of the examples Dr. Rainville used in our class. He said that, imagine a, sec a, a boss has a fantasy about being with his secretary. So that night he dreams about his secretary just, you know, filing, opening and file cases and doing her job and shutting them, opening up another file case and so on and so forth but what's being played out is his fantasy and it's the in and out motion of her filing opening up the cabinets and in and out in and out that's what's being portrayed another example dr randall gave was he said you know if, if you've been like under a lot of pressure you might have this dream of this huge you know 30 foot tire rolling at you you know and that's that's once again the metaphor being played out in the dream back in maybe 2006 or so i put on some weight i weighed more than what i weigh now i've lost 33 pounds as of today but I weighed more than what I weigh now and I had sleep apnea I was basically choking on my air <laughs> I'd stop breathing when I was sleeping and for quite a while maybe uh, you know a minute or so or 30 seconds or whatever Max wife noticed that at the time and we made an arrangement to have a sleep study done and what they do in sleep studies is they hook your body up with electrodes all over they monitor your sleep and what i found out is that i have a rare sleep anomaly where you have these basic stages of sleep i'm in the dream stage all night i go into the dream stage immediately for example do you ever catch yourself just nodding off your head bounces up and down you're really tired but you, you just catch yourself nodding off like that. I can have a dream that feels like it's a three hour dream in that kind of time. And it goes to show you that when you dream, you're outside of this third dimensional construct of time space. You're in the ethereal realms where time doesn't exist. So when I dream, I dream all night. So I would venture to say I probably have thousands of dreams. So there's many that I don't remember, but I do remember quite a few. One of the best dreams I had was shortly after I watched The Secret. Now, I'm originally from upstate New York, but I've always had this affinity to palm trees and the ocean. And I had no idea why. Here I am in the Catskill Mountains in upstate New York, but yet there was something calling me with palm trees in the ocean. Didn't know what it was. Shortly after watching The Secret, I had a dream where my spirit guide introduced herself to me. So I see this woman. It's an American Indian looking woman, 
long black hair, flowing white gown. She goes, hi, Greg. My name is Tamara. I'm your spirit guide. So here I am. I can ask her anything in the world. And what do I do? I repeat her name over and over and over again. Tamara, 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 Tamara. And I said it so many times that I ended up waking myself up out of the dream. She probably thought I was the biggest idiot in the world. You know, I could ask her anything, but <laughs> all I do is repeat her name. So here it is like three o'clock in the morning. And I know that every name has a meaning. So I get on my computer and I type in Tamara. And as it turns out, Tamara means palm tree. So it explained my affinity that I've always had to palm trees. I remember asking my mother, why don't we have a palm tree in our house? Why can't we just grow one and put one somewhere in the corner? Because she had plants all over the place. Just loved palm trees. Every time I see a palm tree, I feel good. I always used to think I was a California guy trapped in a New York body because that's where I saw all the palm trees was in California. But as it tra uh, turns out, I was a Florida guy trapped in a New York body, and there's tons of palm trees here. Plus, we have a lot warmer water. California, they have that Pacific flow of water coming from the north to the south. So even, and for example, I was at the Ocean Pacific Surf Contest one year in August in Huntington Beach, California, Southern California. And the water temperature was 65 in August. So the water's cold there. So some of you will have repetitive dreams as well, a dream that you have had all throughout your life, or it might be something that's been common for the last few years. Many of us have had repetitive dreams of flying, which is one of my favorite dreams. In this dream, you know, I can soar up in the air and I can go back down and arch my back and come back up again. Now, the, the strange thing about this dream about flying is that I have a fear of heights, <laughs> you know, and I've always wanted to basically parachute out of an airplane uh, to face my fear. But in my dream of flying, there's no fear whatsoever. It's as if it's something that I've been doing naturally all my previous incarnations or whenever I'm on the other side of the veil. In general, about 10 to 15% of the people will have dreams about flying. So that's pretty cool. Another dream, uh, well, at least a common theme that I have is, as I mentioned, I was born and raised in upstate New York. I spent the first 40 some odd years in upstate New York, amongst a few other places in between. In my dreams, I'm constantly back in upstate New York. And the way I see it is basically I'm, you know, going home, going back home. And I think that's the metaphor that's being played out because as you'll see, I also have prophetic dreams. And I think that's what I'm being shown and I'm constantly going home. And many of these dreams that I'm, I'm getting, I feel like they're dreams for the masses. It's not just for me. There's messages in there for, for everyone. And that's what's happening. We're all going home. That's one of the things that Dolores Cannon talked about. You know, a lot of people have that feeling of wanting to go home and home not necessarily being here on third dimensional earth. But when it's being played out in metaphor, going back home would be home where you grew up. I also had another dream. This was a pretty cool dream where I'm standing inside of the foundation of a home and there's a bunch of cinder blocks around. And this is another dream that I had that's for the masses, for everybody. Now in dream analysis, in the psychology of sleep and dreams, we learned how to decode our dreams, the metaphors that we have. Let me get to the dream first. In this dream, there were three ladders, I had one foot on the left and one foot on the right ladder. Now straddling the one in between. Now, typically in dream analysis, if you're climbing up a ladder, the ladder would mean a promotion, you're going to get a raise, something along those lines, you're moving up in the world. But if you look at a ladder, what does it look like? It looks like DNA, a DNA strand. And what I was shown in this dream, now these three ladders were leaning up against the foundation of this house that, that was being built. And what I was shown in this dream is that Typical third dimensional human beings have two strands of DNA. This showed me that we're getting upgraded. Now, it's not gonna show me that I was straddling 12 strands or 12 ladders in that dream because that would be almost impossible to envision, but it showed me a DNA upgrade that's in process right now. Now, also something that I learned in the psychology of sleep and dreams, actually this might've been in a different psychology class. When you see a tree, or you see how, actually it's called the house tree person test. And you have pre, uh, somebody draw a tree and you judge the picture by how the tree is drawn, or you have them draw a house. In dream analysis, when you see a car 
or if you see a house, the car or the house or the building is you. For example, if there's something in your life that's out of control, say you're driving in, in your dreams in a car and you hit the brakes and the brakes just don't work, you're not slowing down. That's, that means there's something in your life that's out of control because the car is you. Now in this dream of the house being built in the foundation, the house is me, which I in turn interpret as humanity. This is the new earth that we're building and we're getting the DNA upgrade. So that was pretty exciting. Speaking of prophetic dreams on N5D, I have an article called three massive tidal waves are coming and it's not what you think. And you can check this out. I'll leave a link in the more info section of this video, but it's just basically showing us that sometimes what we dream about can be interpreted as either fear or something prophetic. Now, in this dream, I saw a tidal wave coming at me. I was at the beach and I was calm. I turn around and there's a beach house and I go inside the beach house as the water washed over. There was no fear whatsoever. I could even stick my hand through the window and touch the water and pull my hand back. So the water resides. I get out of the house and I'm walking towards the beach and I see another tidal wave coming. So I turn around to go back into the house and in the meanwhile, in the opposite direction, another one is coming. So I go back in the house and the two waves converge and then they reside and I get out. And at that point in time, I remembered that my truck, which I don't own a truck, but I had a truck that was up on top of a mountain. So I go up to the top of this mountain hill. It might've been a hill, large hill, but I go to the top of it to look for it and the energy had changed. It was this energy of just unconditional love that happens at that point. Now, water is a mutable energy. It can be solid, liquid, or gas. It's also a wave, a wave is energy. So what I was seeing through metaphor in this dream, especially because there, there was no fear going on, are these waves of energy. This huge wave is coming and it's going to transform society. And then there's a cleansing wave and they'll converge and thoroughly cleanse whatever was left over. Now, some of you will also have prophetic dreams of being in the future as well and coming back in time. I've done that in a dream where I sent, this was back in, I think it was 2009, where I sent myself tw from 26 years into the future back to present time because the critical mass wasn't where it was supposed to be. And I sent myself back in time to help lift the critical mass. And it was shortly after that, that I created a movie on YouTube called 2012 The Online Movie. And it ended up getting millions of views. And the reason I did that movie was number one, to help with the critical mass, but number two, to show that 2012 was not an apocalyptic event. It was nothing to be feared. And as a matter of fact, I just watched that video and it's a long video. Um, it's probably, I think two hours and 45 minutes. And I just recently watched it and there's still a lot of amazing information that's relevant today. I'll leave a link in the more info section of this video for that too. So I sent myself back in time, 26 years, from 26 years into the future into the present day, which was 2009. So that would be 2035, apparently the year that the critical mass was just horrible. And uh, sent myself back in time to 2009. And I remember somebody saying, who are you? And my answer was, I'm a master copy of myself. So I cloned myself somehow and sent myself back in time to change the critical mass. Now, maybe 2012 was supposed to be apocalyptic, but not in our reality. I've noticed many things have changed since I've had that dream of going back from 26 years into the future back to 2009. Many timelines have changed. There's been a lot of Mandela effects that have happened. Even whether you like them or hate them, when Trump was elected president, I felt the collective consciousness rise that following day. I felt a lifting, a, a, an easement of everything that was going on and the direction that we were heading. All of a sudden things changed when he was officially elected president. It's important to pay attention to these things in your dreams, little things that, are, that go on in your dreams that, that might seem inconsequential. I highly recommend keeping a dream journal. I've been keeping one for years. Unfortunately, I had one on my last computer that died and I didn't have it backed up. Since then, I've backed up the one I have on my current computer. 
There's an article on N5B that I released. It's called Three Dreams, Time Traveling Creator God, Manifesting on a UFO Mothership and the Memory Wipe. And I'll leave a link in the more info section of this video. But the one I want to talk about is manifesting on a mothership. There's probably quite a few of you who have had these kind of dreams of UFOs being on a ship, seeing UFOs in your dreams. This was one of mine. So a few years ago, I had a similar dream where I was on a large mothership and there were 12 of us circled in a group. In the middle of the circle, there was a hologram where we would each manifest something amazing. It was all done telepathically. One person would manifest something and it would appear as a hologram. We would all telepathically say something along the lines of, that is so cool. But then one of us would add something extra to that hologram and make it even better. We kept doing this until the hologram was completely perfected. I don't specifically remember what it was that we were creating, but it was fun and amazing. So I'm sure many of you have had dreams like that where you've been on a ship or you've seen UFOs. And it's a really cool dream to have. I had another dream where once again, I was back in upstate New York in my hometown and I was at the State University College where both my mother and I graduated from. And I remember I was walking up toward the student union and there's this huge flight of steps that you have to walk up once again, ascending. You know, the metaphor in there is walking up, going up, ascending. And I look up in the sky and there's just hundreds, if not thousands of UFOs just flying around. And I had the feeling that there was a mothership that was up toward the student union in the direction that I was heading. And it was so exciting. I never quite made it there because I got so excited in this dream that I woke myself up out of it. So let me take you to this article, which is pretty interesting. This is a rock star Sammy Hagar's encounter with ninth dimensional beings. So in this article, Sammy says, I'm a firm believer, have seen, have felt, have been contacted three or four different times. I've received information that has been valuable in my life from these people and they have used me. I'm going to sound like a complete nut here, but they have used me in an experimental fashion. The easiest way to put it is that they downloaded my brain information. When I was about 19 or 20, they downloaded everything that was in my head and I caught them doing it. I woke up in the middle of the night thinking, what's going on? They were like, oh my God, he's waking up. But this was all telepathy. There were no words being spoken. As soon as I woke up, it was probably three o'clock in the morning. My whole room was so bright that I could hardly keep my eyes open. I was wide awake. I could not move. Eyes open, white room. They were still disconnecting. And when they did, it just went bang. Everything went back to normal, back to black. I was shaking. I almost passed out. I was sick to my stomach and almost had to throw up. It was so scary. It sent me on a course of curiosity. I bought a telescope and I started reading UFO books and I just got into that whole thing. And since then, there have been three or four other contacts with the same group of people. I don't know who the fuck they are, but I've narrowed them down to a people called the Nine, who are called that because they're from the Ninth Dimension. I've named my publishing company, The Nine Music, after them. So as you can see, Sammy Hagar has had an incredible experience with this group that he calls the Nine. Matter of fact, there's another article on N5D, and I'll leave links for both of these in the more info section. And this one's called Rock Star Sammy Hagar. I met his father in a dream on the night his father died. So in this article, Sammy's saying, one night I dreamed somebody was knocking at the door. I got up to answer it, wondering who could be knocking on my door in the middle of the night. I opened the door and it's my dad, only he's like 22, which is a master number, years old young and vibrant. Hey son, great day for the Irish, he says. He's acting crazed, really happy, but drunk on his ass. What the fuck are you doing here, I tell him. My kid's sleeping right here on the floor, right in this room. Don't ever come here drunk in front of my family. You're going to scare this guy. Now get the fuck out of here. I slammed the door shut and went back to bed. And that's how the dream ended. Two minutes later, somebody's knocking on the door again. I head to the door thinking, God damn it, I'm really going to chew his ass out this time. And I open the door. It's Don Pruitt from next door. Your sister is on the phone, he said. I didn't have a phone of my own. I went over and picked up the receiver. Dad died my sister said. Dad died in the backseat of a police car. They picked him up in a park in San Bernardino across the street from the nightclub. He had been living in the streets since we left him in that burned out house. After the cops picked him up, they arrested three more drunks on the way downtown and all the drunks started fighting in the back seat. One of the cops sprayed mace over the idiots and when they arrived at the police station and got out of the back of the car, 
Dad just fell over for once and didn't get back up. I often wondered what would have happened if, in my dream, I had invited him in instead of yelling at him. So Sammy Hagar's just like really cool. If you don't know him, he was the front man for Van Halen after David Lee Roth was kicked out of the band. And uh, now he does his own thing with ex-Van Halen bassist Michael Anthony and uh, Vic Johnson on guitar, Jason Bonham on drums as well. Led Zeppelin's late drummer, John Bonham's son. But Sammy, when he gets together with the band, before they go on stage, they say some mantras together. And if you look at Sammy, he has this bracelet that says love and light on his wrist. So he's just a really cool down to earth guy. And he's one of the guys that I truly admire, especially having the courage to be a persona like that and still talk about his experiences with interdimensional people, UFOs and you know what I just read you from what he experienced with his father visiting him after he had already died. Now here's something cool that you can find on N5D. Once again I'll leave the link in the more info section of this video. It's a free mp3 past life regression self-hypnosis. It's a 30 minute mp3 and you just click this button right here and it really works. And this was what happened to me when I heard this. Now what happens is you want to play it right before you go to bed and what it will do is trigger a past life experience. I've only done this one time. It's all I needed to hear. And as it says, don't listen to this while driving. Only listen to this right before you go to bed. So this is the past life that I had. I was a Mayan elder who was being forced into Christianity after the Spanish Inquisition. There was a Christian celebration going on in my homeland, which looks similar to an area around Belize, very tropical with beautiful blue waters. There were Mayan glyphs all around that were worn and tattered. I wanted the Christians to include these glyphs in their celebration, but they were only focused on transforming the remainder of my people to Christianity. They threatened to kill me if I didn't convert to Christianity. The only reason I didn't fight the Christians was because I knew the children needed to preserve our traditions without the Christians knowing about it. So I lied about agreeing to convert without the Christians knowing. I planned on teaching the children of our clan our traditions and values, not the Christian ones. So for me, that explained a lot of why I always had the eebie-jeebies. When I went into church, my parents were Methodists when I was growing up, and they would take me to Sunday school, but I'd always get the eebie-jeebies going inside the church. Didn't know why. And that helped to explain a lot of why I got that feeling. Now, one thing I want to talk about too is just this rare thing that I only see young people in my dreams. Everybody is young, even my parents. My parents right now are in their 80s, but in my dreams, they're probably in their 30s, maybe early 40s. They're the oldest people I see in my dreams, only because I wouldn't recognize them if they were in their 20s. Everyone else is in their 20s. Myself, I'm about 27. Um, my sister, Lola, who passed away in 2011, she's visited me a number of times in my dreams, and she looks like she's about 23. She's young, she's healthy, she's happy, she's beautiful. You know, everybody comes to me as being young in my dreams. Now, I put an article out on N5D, and I've also made posts on Facebook as well, asking people, do you see old people in your dreams? And surprisingly, a lot of people thought about that, and they didn't realize it, but they don't see old people either. Now, I'm not saying everybody, but it's enough people to make me say, oh my God, it's not just me. There's quite a few people out there that everyone's young in their dreams. But in my dreams, I'm about 27 years old or so, maybe 28, 29. If you're having a lot of nightmares, the biggest thing is obviously there's there's some kind of fear that's that's coming up or stress-related issues that are going on. So the most important thing is to clear your subconscious mind. Nightmares mean that there's work that needs to be done, or it could actually mean that you're getting psychically attacked. It could be archons, it could be implants. Um, so what you want to do is practice cord cutting and make sure that any cords that you have attached to any possible negative entities or people are cut. You also want to ask for protection from your guides and guardian angels. Make sure at night you um, Specifically ask them. They're there waiting 24-7 just for you to ask. They can't interfere due to the law of free will. So get out there and ask. Another thing is smudge. <laughs> get out there and smudge your house. Make sure that there are no negative entities in your house. 
I'll go through every room, I'll trace the perimeter, and I'll say the same thing over and over. I'm sure you have your own mantra that you say when you smudge. I say something along the lines of, I demand any negative entities leave this house immediately. You're not welcome here. Only those of the highest vibration of truth, love, and light are welcome here. Because you don't want to kick everyone out. You don't want to kick out like your guides and you know family that might not be here with us anymore. You want to welcome them here, but you want to get rid of anything that's negative. So that's what I say when I do my smudging. Now, for those who don't have dreams, what you can do, and this is a recommendation from Sonia Chiquette. She said that you should place a glass of lemon water by your bed and take a sip out of it before you go to sleep and put that intention into the water while you're drinking it that you will remember your dreams. Once again, you might, might wanna ask your guides and angels to help you if there's any kind of block that's going on with your dreams, if you're not receiving dreams, if you can't remember your dreams. Chances are you are dreaming, but there might be some kind of block that's going on. So help ask your uh, guides and angels to give you some kind of help on that. We're gonna leave it off at that. The majority of this show was recorded four years ago in the summer of 2019. Since then, I put on a little weight, lost a whole lot of tan, and lost my goatee as well. <laughs> but then again, it's winter at the time of this broadcast. If you enjoyed this show, please like, subscribe, and share it on social media. And also check out all of the supporting links in the more info section of this video. And finally, if no one has told you this yet today, please allow me to be the first. You are loved. You are appreciated. Thank you for your service to humanity. So until the next time, I'm sending you all infinite love and light from my heart to yours. Much love. Take care, everyone.